Okay. Bury Me in My Jersey by Tom McAllister, published by Villard Books, which is an imprint of Random House in 2010. I picked this book up because it's about being a fan. In McAllister's case of the Philadelphia Eagles football team, the NFL team. I am fascinated about what makes people fans about anything, and specifically sports. Basically, the book takes place between, or in the early aughts, the Philadelphia Eagles, um, until they won a Super Bowl, I think it was in the 2018 season, were known for uh, raising the hopes of their diehard fans very, very high, only to dash them uh, in the moment of truth at the end of the season. I think in 2001, 2002, and 2003, in those seasons, the Philadelphia Eagles lost three consecutive NFC championship games. And then in 2004, in the 2004 season, I think in Super Bowl 39, they lost a close one to the New England Patriots, 24-21, after a failed last quarter drive. So that's when the book takes place. And during this period of dashed hopes for the Eagles, um, and what gives this book weight is uh, McAllister's father dies of cancer and he forms or forges what uh, to him is the most important and perhaps most forgiving relationship of his life with his, according to him, long-suffering girlfriend and then wife, Laura Beth. I had very high hopes for this book. Um, McAllister is uh, one of the co-hosts of a uh, relatively popular literary podcast called Book Fights. Mm, the model for that is Tough Love for Literature. Also, he is the nonfiction editor for the long-standing literary magazine Barrel House, which I also like. He um, his books, I think he's primarily a novelist. He wrote a book in 2018, I think that's his most recent novel, called How to Be Safe, which was well-reviewed in The New Yorker and also in The Washington Post. In fact, in 2018, he wrote a piece called Who Will Buy Your Book? It was published in The Millions. I'll give the link to it below, um, about how disappointing it is when you get a book published, how even the people you love and know don't read your book. It's interesting. Also, he's a graduate of the Iowa Writers' Workshop, which is the most pre prestigious MFA program in the country. And I think he was, according to him, he was one of the last young guys that the legendary director Frank Conroy championed before he died. Um, in this book, McAllister kind of poo-poos his getting into Iowa, but you can definitely see why he got in. You can definitely see how he got in. Um, some of the scenes in this book especially those, I'd say, around Veteran Stadium, where the Philadelphia Eagles play, are, you know, just searingly vivid. He has a tremendous talent for um, uh, carrying out a scene, pacing it, putting um, just the right nugget of dialogue in at the end uh, so that you la burst out laughing. Uh, there's one scene where he writes about playing Sandlot football or with his friends in the eighth grade and then afterwards they all go um, to watch pornography at the house of a friend whose parents aren't home. And this was at the time when pornography wasn't all over the internet and the internet essentially didn't exist at that time. And just the giddy anticipation of these kids, you know, uh, I think the quote is everyone, uh, er people laughing at everything even if it wasn't funny. It's just really, really good. And then near the end of the book, um, when I'd kind of lost a bit of interest, nonetheless, there'll be flashes of this ability to write a scene. There's one scene where he's, at this point, he's at the Iowa Writers' Workshop. He's drunk too much the night before. He's hungover. He's running to his class. He's teaching as an adjunct, and he bends down to tie his shoe. And I don't know, there's a litter of rabbits up on a hill and one of the babies tumbles down and hits his shoe and just the way he brings the, his literary vision in close on the scene and some students pass and say something. Um, 
Yeah, it's a mystery to me why a guy who has such talent for writing scenes like this would ever sort of switch into a kind of general and therefore dull commentary on like what the internet is or you know what pro sports ultimately are or uh, what it means to be an Eagles fan. Also, there are long stretches where he falls into a kind of um, expository kind of writing where he's, you know, talks about, you know, what an upstanding, hardworking, admirable guy his dad is, or the unstinting support and infinite tolerance of Laura Beth. I mean, it's kind of lapidary and uninspiring on those stretches. Um, but I guess, you know, one of the things that perhaps irked me most about this book um, is the way he'll, the way he describes himself, like, like he'll talk about his egregious offenses or his inexcusable behavior or abandoning people at the most difficult moments of their lives or weaseling out of commitments or at one point I think he says I think the three adjectives he uses are he calls it bizarre inhuman and disrespectful inhuman that he believes he would be capable of weeping if the Philadelphia Eagles won a Super Bowl but he can't for some reason cry because his father died. I mean, how is that inhuman? Like, isn't that the most human thing possible? I mean, isn't the world filled with people who can weep at a sappy film on TV but can't properly mourn the loss of the people they most love? He's, I mean, he's too hard on himself. I mean, to me, there is a a line, I don't know if it's a fine line, but I would say McAllister definitely steps over it. The line between self-denigrating, a self-denigrating tone, and just abject self-loathing. He just keeps beating up on himself. And, you know, therefore the book lacks a kind of generosity of spirit i mean if you rip into yourself as a 16 year old which is what he does a 16 year old who is latently racist or um, cowardly or phony or um, arrogant i mean isn't every 16 year old like that i mean Aren't we all during the years between 16 and 23 kind of forming our character, understanding what moral responsibility is, failing all the time, learning from our mistakes, you know? I don't know. I mean, and then as though in an attempt to kind of atone for what he believes his sins to be, this book is a very Catholic book in many, many ways. There's a line at one point where he talks about how it it was a ritual. Mass, going to Denny's, the restaurant with his father, and then football was a Sunday ritual for him. So in many ways, the book is self-castigating in that way, in a kind of Catholic way. Um, So he'll sort of, like, he'll proceed to, or in the book, he proceeds to kind of display himself as the worst kind of hooligan, misbehaving in stadiums, you know, insulting children. It's just like, why would you parade before me the lowest moments of your life? Why would you do that? I mean, what is he trying to do there? Is he trying to, does he really think that he's worse than anybody else? Or is he trying to show that he's better than everybody else because he admits it. You know, at one point, I think he says, what is the line? He says, America is people like me, scrambling to fill the void whose existence they don't admit, trying to complete themselves 
or at least forget themselves through any means possible. Alcohol, sugar and fat, violence and football. Isn't that kind of reductive? And isn't it, isn't that kind of arrogant? America is people like me. It's also people who are not like him. And I don't really believe this is him. It's a part of him. You know, do you remember that, that film director, Lars Van Trier? I think I saw a film in 2000 called Dancing in the Dark with Bjork or Bjork. Okay, the vision of Lars Van Trier. Everything is so bleak. People are so, like, cruel, selfish. It's just a nihilistic vision of life. So he was, like, kind of lauded for it, boldly expressing the truth. Okay? But that's not the truth any more than the typical Hollywood fantasy is truth. I mean, both are partially true, but the actual truth is somewhere in the middle. And that's the thing with this book by Tom McAllister. I don't believe this is really him. I don't believe that he's this much of an idiot and an asshole. I think he's putting the idiot and the asshole side of himself first for some weird personal atonement or some way to sort of absolve himself what he believes to be, you know, his terrible or egregious offenses or inexcusable behavior. At one point he says, I am no Frederick Axley. That's true. Um, Frederick Axley wrote a fan's notes, which I guess you could say is comparable to this because the narrator of that book is a diehard New York Giants fan. The thing is, though, and the book also has a kind of tone of self-loathing, a fan's notes. The thing is, though, you know, when Exley writes about his self-loathing, he's kind of mocking himself. And even when he's lambasting himself, he's mocking the person that's lambasting himself. I mean, it's also a work of genius, right? I mean, look, if there's one recommendation that I can make, I mean, unequivocally, it's a fan's notes. You can't put a genre on it. I mean, it's part fiction, it's part memoir, it's just a mix, and it's just pure literary enjoyment. I mean, it's one of those rare experiences where I often say that I like to forget that I'm reading, but not when I'm in that sort of under the thrall of a genius like Frederick Axley, because you forget you're reading while you're reading a fan's notes, but also no, because you enjoy so much, like the thrall he's got you in. And it's just fascinating to see how he does it. Like one sentence after another, one paragraph after another. You're just like, wow. Um, so yeah, I mean, what can I say? I mean, tremendously talented Tom McAllister, without a doubt. I think he made a mistake with this book. It didn't really teach me much about being a fan, mm. uh, I think it taught me that, or it can teach writers that, you know, we should never, or we can't write well about ourselves, you know, insightfully, wisely, clearly, until we get over ourselves. Because, you know, if we love ourselves too much, we'll go too easy on ourselves. And if we hate ourselves too much, it will be too hard on ourselves. And it's as though, you know, Tom McAllister does both in this book. It's like he kind of both grovels and glories in himself. Um, yeah. <laughs>